Yes. <laughs> and uh, once the pick was official, and you know, I, I know Chuck Burks had, had talked to Dax quite a bit, and Jordan Kovacs and those guys. So um, again, we're not necessarily making all those phone calls, but but our guys in the building have been doing that. Yeah, it's been no, it's been great. You know, uh, you know, you're at at premium positions, and and that's what it takes in this part of the draft is to get those players because they they seem to disappear pretty quick. So um, happy with yesterday, and then uh, you know now we get a, a corner with great speed and he's got good length, and uh, you know he's played a lot of football, so uh, feel good about it. The four point. Yeah, you take the whole, you know, the whole thing and put it together, and I think he's uh, he's got some a little bit of ways to go from a weight standpoint. But uh, man, he you can't you can put some weight on, you can't make him four two. So um, that that's uh, something that you know uh, the explosiveness that he has in his body. He's a tough guy. Uh, he'll throw his body around, so it's not it's not that he won't try to tackle or anything like that. So we we feel like we're getting a, a complete player. So how do you judge like? Um, I mean, I think there's a, b a bunch of different ways to look at it. Uh, this guy, I think, does have some flexibility, uh, but we're, we're certainly starting him uh, outside. And, um, you know, he's done some of the inside work. Uh, I think yesterday we, we were talking about it, it's over 600 some odd snaps outside. So he's primarily an outside guy. But, um, but uh, you know, you get him in the building, you, you move him around, and you see, you see what, we, uh, you know, what we thought we saw on tape. And, if, and uh, we think we got a guy that can do some different things. And we'll see when we get him here. Oh, we'll see. You know, you know, I don't, I don't know. We'll see how it all plays out. Lou, you lost two veterans in, in Vaughn and Jesse, obviously, and now you guys are building a very young, but talented, and fast secondary. How, how do you think it's playing out so far? Yeah, it's playing out great. We, you know, but we still have great veterans in that room. You know, Cheeto, Mike Hilton. Uh, you know, we brought in Nick. Um, you know, Mike Thomas is in that. We've got guys that have been around this league for a long time. Um, to teach these guys, uh, you know, our way and the right way to do things. So um, we'll miss those guys, but you know, we we've got great leadership and great uh, players in that in that room still. Zach, after choosing Miles Murphy <clears throat> last night, you talked about the importance of putting pressure on the quarterback. Mm -hmm. This is the other half of that, right? In the, in the current state of the NFL, defending the pass, you got to have both, right? No doubt, and and. You know, this guy's just competitive, you know, and Lou mentioned toughness, and that, that's what you see. You know, that's that's the perspective I, I look at from the offense side of the ball is uh, these DBs, man, the ones that compete and are tough are, are valuable, and he's got the speed to match it. And, um, you know, he's played in pro pro systems before in Michigan, you know, so we, we certainly value that as well. And and so we, we think we're adding the right guy to the mixer. What was the pre-draft process with him like? Did you guys meet with him and have a plan to what was that like and what things did you have to I, I didn't, you know, Chuck Burks, there's oftentimes the position coach will meet with them and our scouts have met with them at, at a variety of different places, but um, face to face in my office, I haven't done that. Lou, right when they talk about, when you talk about pro systems, what is it about Michigan's defense that you think seems that maybe is conducive to what y'all like to do and, and maybe can help with what you can help with? Uh, uh, just doing very different coverages and things like that. But, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of teams that do it, but they do, you know, uh, some things that translate into our league. Um, plays a small role in the in the evaluation process. It's not the only piece, but uh, it certainly helps when you can see him do multiple things. Lou, does the fact that Dax knows them and recruited them by jurisdiction of Penn Link came in football language to a certain extent, does that help in terms of learning the playbook and learning the lay of that room? Well, I think that, you know, they'll know each other and, and Dax can kind of give them the lay of the land a little bit, but uh, you know, and then if they're out there at the same time, they've played together before, so so it certainly helps. You know, it's again, it's just a piece to the puzzle, um, but uh, the familiarity that they both have with each other can only help. You mentioned the four two six. It, it can obviously there's plenty of not plenty of guys, but there are guys that can run that, but don't necessarily play that fast. Does does that line up for you? The the play the the play scheme the. the yeah, you see it. Uh, you see it on tape. You you know, it's a it's a good question because you'll see guys that have great time speed and it doesn't match their play speed and uh, vice versa. But th this guy can run and you see it on tape. If he gets out of position, he can get back in it because of his speed. You know, DBs in our league today, they're going to get beat 
uh, they're going to get out of position, and this guy has the recovery speed uh, to get back in and maybe make a play on the ball. So uh, that's that's one of the things that we really like. Max mentioned the competitiveness. Does that include tackling? Because I know you're obviously very fond of corners who can tackle yeah. very well and have a number of them already here. Yeah, for sure. He he will throw his body around, um, and he's proven that, you know, uh, certainly in the Big Ten um, and in playoff games and in big games. So, um, you know, you, you see his physicality, uh, that, and he's proven he can do it. Will this, will this be more of a faster secondary he's coached, and what, what does so much high end speed in the secondary do for you? Well, I just think, the, again, when you look around the league and the, the weapons that uh, so many teams have on offense and the speed uh, that people have, um, you know, you got to try to match it somehow. And, uh, you know, the faster guys we can get, you know, certainly is going to give us an ex- uh, an advantage. Um, you know, we're going to have to chase quarterbacks around, and that means you have to cover a little bit longer. And, uh, you know, the, the, the faster we are, I think the better chance we have to get off the field. You mentioned the pro style that he played in, but how much of it is the benefit to kind of see him play other top programs, Ohio State, playing college football at Justin, so the same things like that, and just see him against that type of competition. Oh, it's huge. I think when when they come from big programs like this, um, you know, they're going to walk into the stadium and, you know, they're going to they're going to be used to the place being full, uh, you know, and they're not going to flinch when it comes to that part of it. So, you know, you like you you like the guys coming from the from the bigger programs and, and he's from one of the biggest. Last year you get Cam Taylor Britt in the second round. You get him, DJ Turner, second round this year. How much do you kind of see any resemblance, any differences between him and Cam at all? Um, they they're they're a little bit different. Um, both fast. Um, you know, Cam's a little a uh, little bit bigger of a guy, uh, but uh, both very very competitive. Uh, both you know uh, want to win. Uh, both have great attitudes about football. They love the game. So uh, there are some similarities, but uh, body types just a little bit different. Yeah, he, I, I just think the way the guy moves changes direction, not only in the long part of it with his long speed, but he can really, in the short area, quickness stuff is really excellent. So um, I think that uh, that helps offset some of the other things. Uh, coincidental is the way I'd put it. You know, it's. Um, I, I think that's just again going back to Duke. The way that this roster has been built has allowed us the flexibility to take the best players available. Um, this hit us a good need at corner, uh, but at the same time, if if we didn't have somebody there that we valued here in the second round, we wouldn't have taken a corner. We would have gone to a different position. And so, I just think that th- there's not a lot of glaring holes here. It's a lot of guys that um, are going to have opportunity to get on the field, um, probably initially in depth roles, and then work their way up. And that's ideally the way that you're you're going into the draft. You're not seeing a glaring hole that a starter role that you got to fill. These guys can come in the right way and learn the systems, and then um, integrate themselves in the locker room and, and start to earn more playing time. And so um, that's just a credit to how our scouting department's really built our roster and allowed us to go into the draft. And um, who knows? Maybe maybe there's an offense player that that you liked, and all of a sudden they get snatched off, and then there's the next defense player you got. And um, so it's I feel really good about how we're built, how we're continuing to build it. And uh, just the way that we we've taken really the best players available. Do I like getting good players in the first <laughs> and second round? <laughs> I, I do. A bunch of young players coming in together that kind of good. Can that? Can those guys kind of play off each other and develop a little bit of their own identity within your own group? I think so. I think if if they were the only ones and they were the, you know just left alone as young players and they were just coming into a, a a building full of young players and I think it might be a problem. But the veterans that we have on the team um, and the way we go about our business, I think they're fortunate to come to us uh, and, and the way that our players treat them uh, and will help them grow in this league along with the coaches. Obviously, uh, is second to none in my opinion. So. Um, I think it's a, uh, I think it's an advantage for us, um, and I think it's an advantage for the for the young guys to come into our building. No, uh, you know, you just never know what position it's it's about. Um, it does seem like there's been a lot of movement. Feels like more than normal. 
you know, yeah. So that's just the way it goes, and, and you just sit tight and hope the player that you, that you want is there, and DJ was there for us, you know, and so we were excited about it. I think we're in a good position to keep taking the best player available here, you know, and, and obviously we've checked some boxes at some key spots. Uh, but but I still think that there's there's good players on the board um, that we had high up there that were hopeful to be there in the second round for this pick that may still be around. And uh, I can't wait to get up there and see who's see who the last five picks are and if we lost anybody we like. But uh, that, that's just kind of part of the fun of day two and seeing what's around there and what other teams are rallying. Yeah, I won't. I won't go that far to to say what our next uh, need was there, but um, there's still good players that we like there. Following up on Nate, following up on Nate, Cheetos coming back from a torn ACL. Sam Taylor Britt's played one year. Mm -hmm. Sidney Jones has had some injury problems in his career. How vital was it to not only add depth, but to get a guy who, if pressed into service, can play and, and play a you know a significant role right away? I, I believe if there's two positions you can say you can never have enough players over 17 game season plus the play, it's it's defensive line and corner. And, and so that's just um, anytime there's a good player there that's going to help you, I, I don't think you're ever wrong, you know, hitting at those two spots. And, again, we, we feel like we've got really high-end players at all those spots, but um, it never hurts you to, to take a guy that you think fits your system and what you want to do. And, um, you know, you, you could argue a couple other spots, but those are, those are two key spots to me. I think that you're never wrong adding valuable players there. Yeah, that's that's the tough part is when they can rush you, like like we can rush people, um, and then there's the speed in the back end to cover it and, and not you know not have some um, glaring opportunities to throw and catch and and so again I, I feel good about how this thing's being built.